and he is also correlated with an MTech uh, with a degree of MTech. Now, currently, he is executing as the role, uh, the role of an scientist SC as ISRO. Our uh, today's topic is journey to ISRO. So, may I call upon the guest over here to please start the survey? Hello? Mr. Sandipan Das, are you present over here? Hello. I I do please request Mr. Sandipan Das to please to attend the meeting and please start with the summary.
Good evening, lessons and new shares. Me audible to everyone. Congratulations uh, to all the euphoric souls in this toilet company. Today's uh, speaker is Mr. Sandipan Das, who has graduated from our own halls of IE in 2015 from the branch of metallurgical engineering. He has also coordinated with uh, the degree of um, MTech. Uh, so today, a uh, topic is journey to Israel. The name is indeed very, very good. So without further delay, I will just request our now to please start the song. Thank you so much. Am I audible to you? Uh, yes, uh, you are audible to me. Yes, sir, you can, you can hear Am I audible? Me, uh, start. Yes, sir, you are audible. So you are audible. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, it is, this can be a bit of a question and session because uh, it won't be good. Like uh, I'll be sharing my entire journey from that. If, if it can be a light of, light of a question, it would be better for the audiences also. Because we have a lot of questions from our audiences. Uh, uh, so, yes, we can start. We can start uh, with it. Okay. Good evening to everyone. Yeah. Yeah, it starts from me. It's obviously from if the name of the topic, Journey to Israel. Israel is a certain place. It's, it's indeed a dream to everyone, and you know, very few people can achieve that dream. So my question is that how it's possible to hold that consistency and patience? Okay. Um. So before saying how did how is it consistently holding its place? Uh, we we need to understand that. Um, Isro, what it is right now, it's of a lot of dedication and patience that has been put in for the last 40 years. So Isro was founded way back in uh, 19, uh, 1970s, so 1969 actually. So from then onwards, it has taken a lot of steps, a lot of troubles, a uh, lot of failures. And uh, starting from the launch vehicles, how it has been developed and which slowly progressing it has reached now. So if we ever go and read the history of ISRO, it is just phenomenal. It is like how, like within us, uh, within the uh, one hour of launch, uh, there have been pullouts saying that the launch is due to be canceled. And uh, from there to reach, uh, to, to place an, uh, a satellite, I mean, uh, I mean, that's uh, it's a great thing, actually. The Chandrayaan 2 mission, the Manglayan mission, I mean, these are breathtaking experiments that have been carried out. And hopefully, in the upcoming years, we'll be able to um, carry forward the legacy uh, by the, our younger team. And yeah, I mean, that's our hope and that's our mission, that's our vision. So we'll, so we, are, we are hopeful that we'll be able to carry out that legacy forward. So you please describe your journey as the new graduate student, you know, starting uh, your career at NIT Durgapur and reaching a place where, you know, which is itself a dream come true. It, you know, it's, it's phenomenal indeed because, you know, whenever this 
we just talk to our friends or relatives or family so suddenly the person says yes i am i just to work in isro you know the feeling is in that a great uh, at the conversation so you please uh, share that uh, how had been your journey as a young uh, for students uh, starting at NIT Dukapur and reaching this trip because I had, uh, 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 you know, uh, it came to me a lot of, you know, I have heard from many persons like IITs are very much important for, you know, holding a position in East Europe, but you are an NIT so what are your Okay, okay, okay. Let me break some myths right now for, for our young, uh, all our young students right now. So, I was just a simple, uh, simple teenager who went out to uh, to venture into NIT in 2011. Uh, I chose metallurgy primarily because I, my inclinations were more on on having a knack towards chemistry. I liked it. Okay. I had a rank of around 20, 20,541. So I chose it. But unfortunately, yeah. or fortunately, what is but unfortunately, fortunately, what to say, I actually, um, I scored well from the very beginning. And because I was a day scholar at that point of time, so there was this facility provided to us from the from the college that the day scholars at that point of time were supposed to stay at home. That was the facility that was given to us. We can have it and we cannot have it. So my parents thought like, okay, this guy, uh, sorry. Yeah, this is wonderful, you know, I need to take this at home. Also, you know, having friends. Yeah. It's a wonderful. Yeah. So, so all these years, so from 2011 to 2012, so it was like, um, okay, fine. Um, it was not that great. My first semester pointer was 8.36. My first, my second semester point was pointer was nine. So, but as soon as I stepped into the metallurgy department, something happened to me. I I have no idea what happened to me. And frankly speaking, I had no goals. I had no goals of reaching ISRO. My first dream job, to be very frank, was getting into sale and getting into Tata Steel. That was my first dream dream job, actually. So nothing of that sort I had ever imagined. But but sometimes what I've realized in my life is something what is destined for you that will come and fall into your place. So I ended up having a pointer of 9.45 uh, while I graduated. Then I, I had a decent gate rank of 46. So, but not the best gate rank in my in my college, rather, because some of them, I think from my department, one of them had scored a gate rank of six. He went to um, IIT Bangalore. I went to IIT Bombay. In IIT Bombay, in IIT Bombay, I rather uh, chose corrosion science and engineering because of my inclination towards reaching Tata Steel. But unfortunately, or fortunately, in the placement sessions that time, um, I could not sail through. And uh, and one year and one year. Fortunate enough, your your destiny is written in golden words. Like you are in sciences, SC and ISRO. Like you know, many of the people dream dream of having association with the space institute. But you know, very few people can reach up to that level. But here you have never thought. Here you have thought of joining Tata Steel. But your fate was written in golden letters. So you know, you see. Yes, and 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 in fact, uh, um, sometimes what I felt, what a great thing that I missed in NIT was forming a network. I mean, at the point of time when I graduated from NIT 2015, the network alumni was not that good. I mean, it it was good from in an in within the uh, within the, uh, uh, the 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 vicinity of people who are staying outside. The, uh, the NIT Durgapur people had formed an alumni group who were outside, they were well connected, but within India, they, that was more scattered. But fortunately, uh, in 2016, I was holding a seminar. At that point of time, I met one of those persons who was a former alumni of NIT Durgapur itself. He actually uh, was working at that point of time in, in ISRO. So he actually gave me this knowledge that yes, ISRO definitely recruits metallurgists. So please take some time and uh, get into the websites and please do have a check. 
that was the first time I got into it. Got into my mind. Okay, fine. Apart from this, um, metallurgists have also been taken up by IIS Bangalore. So when I graduated in 2017, it was not a good job that I had got. The placement was okay, okay, but not up to the mark. Uh, subsequently, I moved into Hindustan Copper in the same in the year end of 2017. Then I started preparing for IIS Bangalore because at that time of time um, the the recruitment came, and luckily it was an MTech based. Recruitment. Normally, ISRO floats a B-Tech based recruitment all over India, and that's called ISRO Centralized Recruitment Board. So that mechanicals apply, electronics apply, computer science people apply, and um, this year only, uh, like last year, 139 people have joined ISRO with a B-Tech background. So I was fortunate that year that uh, there was a vacancy that was listed, and primarily for material science. And uh, yeah, I mean, how destiny plays plays a role. I I went to I went to Kerala because uh, I didn't know that whenever when when will the next time I'll be getting a kind of uh, exposure of 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 uh, coming and and uh, and experiencing the God's own country. But yeah, I mean, I ended up there. I just I prepared well, but not to an over extent because at that time, at that year in 2018, I had I had also given J8 once, so the preparation was well, and I and it was more of like okay, fine. अगर कुछ नहीं भी हुआ तो फिर क्या ही जाता है ऑलरेडी मेरे पास एक पीएसयू की जॉब है तो ठीक है चलते जाके देखे आते एग्जाम एंड लकी इट एंड या आई आई एम एम हियर हियर बी कंप्लीटिंग इयर्स बाय बाय नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट मंथ सो आई एम आई हैड अ वंडरफुल जर्नी इन इसरो at that point of time i don't know whether you i think you most of them you will not be knowing but you'll be hearing stories of them uh, so they played a huge role um, to where i am right now staying here i owe a lot to my metallurgy department of nit durgapur had it not been there had i not been studied there if i would have been in mechanical or computer science i can guarantee i would not have reached here definitely and metallurgy has just brought uh, Uh, like laurels for me that's what i can say my next let me tell me different being a scientist st as is so from being a scientist okay um so basically <clears throat> it's just a pure analogy suppose in our colleges when a when a uh, when a professor joins he is the assistant professor after 5 years he becomes associate professor then he finally becomes uh, after certain period period of time he becomes a professor similarly here the persons who join with a btech background the first the first uh, um, uh, cadet which he comes is scientist st so i got a promotion in 2 years because of my mtech eligibility so i am right now sd so i got promoted in 2020 so i am sd from then so my next promotion is due in 2024 so i'll be as scientist se ss further so that is the thing it's we are all scientists working here but it's like a differentiation between sc sd sd and that's the uh, normal uh, The how is the things are like the post wise the differentiation is. Sorry, uh, how can a person become a space interpreter in India? Okay. So, if you people have seen, okay, entrepreneur is a buzzing word right now. So, if you people have, uh, I am a great follower of this new TV show that has come up on Shark Tanks. I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, I am, I am a great fall follower of of that, and I am a great fan of uh, of this person called uh, uh, Aman Gupta. The way he has established that boat brand, it's phenomenal. I mean, when we were of your your age, starting college. Having a JBL was a great thing, and JBL dominated the market space at that point of time. But pro 2016, how things have been taken up, I mean that's phenomenal. But coming back to the space thing, and space business is very costly. You know, one failure can entirely doom the entire thing. 
However, I might say that there are space entrepreneurs um, buzzing up. Like there are private space agencies that are being set up that are also being held by ISRO to some extent in using the already established technologies or facilities for testing. Like Agnikul is one of them. Like uh, Agnikul is one of Agnikul and uh, one more in um, uh, in Hyderabad is there. I am just I am just not recollecting that name. So these are two two major budding um, entrepreneurs or private players that will definitely come. We are expected to come uh, in some near future. But uh, but how to get how to become an entrepreneur? I have I don't have that expertise to say on that actually. I don't have. I'm really sorry. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I mean, space business is very very costly. So I am expecting like. A collaboration of three, four people might end up there, but it will some take some time. Uh, yeah, uh, that's the other company's name was Skyroot, Skyroot Aerospace. Skyroot Aerospace and Agnikul are leading the private player space market. Uh, I, 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 I mean, uh, they they will be doing something great. I mean, ISRO is funding them also. They are going to use some technologies also. They are developing some engines also. But yeah, hopefully in the in the coming years, uh, they will be doing a great thing. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, the next question comes as what advice would you give to your younger generations to succeed? Okay, I am just 29 and you people might be all 21, so I am not that uh, that great a person to give an advice, but what as a as a friend or as a as an alumni, what I will just teach you is what I will tell you is that what I have experienced oh, during my tenure at, uh, at NIT. I don't know what the culture is right now. Be open to changes. Be open to change changes. Talk with the persons of your uh, of your departments. Like suppose if someone person is from like you, if someone is in fourth year, na, try to establish the connections with the peers of other colleges also. The networking, what I'm trying to talk. Okay, networking helps in unbelievable ways. You will not believe me. I mean, currently I'm here just because of the networking that I had, frankly speaking. And this is the only thing. And yes, apart from networking, please learn coding. Please use machine learning. Please use, please know Python. Please know uh, any uh, softwares. I mean, because after some point of time, B is a metallurgy or the mechanical, everything will be software oriented, software dominated, definitely. So please learn coding. Please uh, uh, try to get into more people's network and be open to acceptance and open to new kind of whatever the knowledge you are getting. Don't just uh, keep yourself like this. Like whatever we have, we have just read in our textbook, ask people, Kyu ho rai? Kaise ho rai? Maybe the professors may be wrong. Maybe your friend sitting in the next bench who might be silent, who might be scoring less than you. He might be the bigger person to understand that concept. Ask them, discuss with him. I think that is the way how we can progress further. That is my advice to you all people. Okay. Uh, and what are some of the most exciting projects you have worked on at ISRO till now? Okay, so a project takes a longer time to build up. It takes, suppose, uh, so currently we are working on uh, human space flight. So where ISRO is planning to put three astronauts uh, in our launch vehicle, take it to space and bring it back. So for that, we have, so because I'm from a material science background, so we are trying, we, I'm not saying that I have, we are de developing new materials, but we are trying at ex and qualifying the existing materials for the usage of human flights. The testing pro procedure, I am involved in that with respect to the materials genre. So this is one of the exciting things that I'm working on. And, and also the other thing I'm working on is uh, currently I'm working in some really good instruments uh, like a residual stress analyzer for 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 uh, how to measure the amount of stress that is there in a steel plate and like all those 
I cannot uh, divulge much more, much more thing. But yes, from an organizational point of view, ISRO is right now working on this Gaganyaan thing, the human space flight. Um, Chandrayaan three, they are they are working. The next flight from JSL to Mars will be Chandrayaan three. Then they are also we are working on semi cryo engine, uh, which will be like having uh, will give a huge boost to the uh, payload because of its huge thrust that it is having. So these are the few note. We are also working on the electric propulsions, where, where the electric propulsion engines will be uh, uh, carrying out the thrusting business in the uh, in the uh, in the satellites that will be rotating on the in the in the space or maneuvering in the space. So these are the few challenging things that we are working on. I'm sure everyone is having goosebumps now. Okay. My next question goes as what are the best opportunities after getting B tech from metallurgy in DRT or ISRO or work? Which one has the more workload? Okay. Mm. Okay, fine. Let me uh, tell you a bit small bit of a story. So uh, I had one of my friends uh, when I when I was passing out in 2015, I had one of my friends uh, who who actually cracked bark at that point of time. Who actually had a not a very good uh, uh, like sing single or a double digit figure in in J, but he cracked bark. So and so for, so he's continuing. From there, from 2015, he's still there, 2021. I often have very uh, nice, lively conversations with him regarding that, and we discuss regarding our workload because he is in bar, I am in ISRO. And with respect to the DRDO, I do not have any contracts right now because uh, whatever I've heard for the last uh, like five, six years, DRDO has not recruited any metal scientists. So there have not been any vacancy. Okay. But yeah, definitely mechanical takes, uh, the, the mechanical people are being taken up. Uh, by DRTO, they are taken up by ISRO, they are taken up by DRC, they are taken up by DMRL, everything they are doing. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, work pressure point of view, it will be there. Not like uh, you will be uh, stretched to work from morning 7 to night, 11 o'clock. But there's an interest that we have in working. This is the work uh, that we have commonly shared. Like the bar people will also admit it. Like whoever wants to work, they will work. And whoever does not want to work, they will not, not work. It's not enough. Work, work pressure. But yeah, I mean, as we grow up the ladder, if we are interested to take up the work pressure, our, our own knowledge will be enhanced and that will help us in getting a formidable name in our in our uh, uh, ecosystem, in our in our department, and that will help us in getting more accolades and more promotions more often than not. So with respect to the workload, I mean, it's okay. We, we, we work from morning 9 to 5 and uh, sometimes we do have to stay some extra hours, but that's depending on our choice. Sometimes I'm conducting some experiments. Okay, fine. That's okay. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's okay. It's not an enough workload that I'll be breaking my bones and I'll be leaving my job. It's not like the software industries right now. Definitely not. Okay. So this is a striking question. Uh, what opportunities regarding internships are available in ISRO for the BTEC students? Uh, okay, uh, I cannot comment on the internships business. What is there? Um, okay, let me put it in this way. So uh, there are four major centers in ISR. Okay, so two caters to uh, two centers caters to this our the electronic background, which are like the URSC, the the URSC Bangalore, and uh, one is at the Space Application Center Ahmedabad. So there, I am not aware much. But uh, then BTEC people might be taken care for the internship because recently, but to where I am working at Liquid Propulsion System Center and the mother center, which we have at Vikram Sarabhai Space Center, there is a law that, or rather a rule that is being currently followed that only persons um, uh, who are general uh, sons or daughters, or they will be eligible for doing a final year project. However, um, the MTech students, who are keen to apply for uh, this uh, for their MTech project? They can definitely contact uh, in ISRO for doing their MTech work based on the, based on if it is serving our requirmental need, our functional need. So that is the thing for the internships. I can say. Okay. Uh, 
The next question is, what makes ISRO one of the top organizations in space race in the world? What makes ISRO the one of the top organizations? Okay, uh, it is very difficult to, to be a part of the system and then tell that. But yeah, I mean, the, the ability to not, to not, um, uh, <clears throat> to not leave, but stick to the principles. So, okay, let me tell you in this manner. If you ever read the history of ISRO, how it started from 1969, how many failures it, it endured from SLV3 to ASLV to PSLV, if you read, each and every first launches of each of the launch vehicles was a failure. Okay. It was a time then people used to tell SLV that was used for uh, like launch, launch, launch vehicle. They used to uh, like they used to make a comic out of it. They used to love, tell tell it like it's a sea loving vehicle because it used to launch and then fall into the sea. That used to be in the paper, in the newspaper, next year newspaper. Sea loving vehicle for SLB. Okay. So from that space and from that economic background, the financial stability of our country right now is far, far better right now what, compared to what it was way back in 1980s. So from that, some very, very great visionaries were there at that point of time who helped in um, making ISRO what it is right now. So failures were occurring, but Taking and finding out each and every reason what caused the failure and not just going on whimsical decisions at that point of time, but to take time, analyze everything. And that makes ISRO one of the greatest uh, space agencies in the world. If you see from 1994 to 2017, PSLV did not have a single failure. It had a series of things that went on with not a single failure because because before that first launch of ESLV, ASLV, SLV was failures were there. So the path to success was already laid out by the failures that it had in the past 10 years before the uh, second launch of ESLV. So I think this is one of the most important things, perseverance, the dedication of the scientists and uh, the honesty with which they work. I think this is one of the key things. Take into account the uh, the kind of monetary resources we have and the population we have, and to spend it with the uh, like each and every now and then, people might ask us that uh, that uh, you know, why is it needed? Why is the space agency needed? The imp why is the importance of space agency? But trust me, at that now the digital TV that we are seeing, the satellites what we are TV, the the TVs, the the the, the communications, each has a role to play. The ISR has a big role to play. Had it not been established at that point of time, we would not have had access to satellite the rights, and we always used to have to depend on the other space agencies, whether it's a NASA or a Russian Glass Cosmos or a or a or an alien space. So we will have to depend. So we are like independent space agencies taking into uh, taking into our own needs. Our satellites are helping our own organize our own country to grow from taking into account all the. Uh, from the, from the weather forecast to metrology, to everything, to, to communication. So, yeah, I mean, these are the traits that has helped either to grow at such a big, like having a 10 year, 12 year, 15 year period without a simple fa failure in case of the grid. And that is a commendable, that the testimony to the, to the, to the scientists working out here. Uh, to India, this means like Skyroot impose any challenges in front of ISRO. Uh, can you just repeat it? Okay. Do Indian private space companies like Skyroot impose any challenges in front of ISRO? Yes, definitely they do. So because uh, these are private players, now so. They are modulus operandi, the way the system operates of taking the, the decisions 
<clears throat> that just play a big role, big challenge too, because ultimately ISRO is the central government organization. Okay, so before taking any kind of a decision, there are a large number of committees. Okay, now when Skyroot and Aerospace will be, uh, when Skyroot and uh, this Agnikul will be will, will will be there, will be functioning, and if they have a proper launches one after another, I am talking about that time. Currently, no, they are not posing any challenges, but with their limited infrastructure, with their limited manpower, but technology as competing as cutting edge with respect to what ISRO has. And if they if they happen to launch a series of uh, of uh, of satellites one after another without any failure in a rapid space of time, then definitely uh, this will pose a threat to ISRO. That's definitely near near future. So that our uh, system of operations should change uh, as has time has progressed. There is no point in having multiple meetings uh, currently, uh, uh, although it's a requirement because it's uh, the, the money is the taxpayer's money, but uh, we are bound by that. But obviously that will inculcate, their success will inculcate, will, will be forced to inculcate some changes in our system, in our bureaucracy, in our ISR and that. But, that time is yet to come, and hopefully we'll be ready. Will some changes will be there by the time that thing happens, and we will not get a posing challenge from the private. But definitely, uh, we are eager to to have that um, that kind of a, an emergency also, because that gives us a scope to improve also. Because when there are so, it's basically similar. Like if I am the first boy of my class, and the second boy is very very far away from me, I have no scope for for improvement. It's very simple to that. So if my second and third who are ranking in my class are also coming as close to me, so that helps me in improvement. So it's simple as that. Okay, now another question. You know, everyone dreams of being associated, being getting associated with great agencies like NASA or ISR or European Space Agency and, and so on. Okay. Uh, and for that, it needs a very strong academic background, like high CGPAs, being exceptional in academics, or something like coding these days, or being outstanding in the subjects like artificial intelligence, machine learning, which you said uh, like a few, uh, few minutes back. But I'm asking for those students who dream really, really very big, like I myself a great administrator of ISRO and I really dream of being getting associated with ISRO from my childhood like I was uh, like knew about APC Boom column and then it tried to my mind that no I have to join ISRO somehow in my career and later I dreamed of getting uh, of getting a good CGPA but it somehow really didn't happen of the corona pandemic you know that uh, everything went online there were issues starting online so my question is if uh, someone has a you know low cgp then what she or he can uh, like do if he or she really wants to get associated with this agent okay coming to this point okay uh let me exclude myself from this point because um I always uh, had this luxury of having a high CPI and that when I had to go for the interview, it helped me to build up the con confidence to speak in front of the interviewers. Okay, but but I have been acquainted. I have lived with people who have just enough CPI, but still they are in ISR. I was acquainted uh, earlier where I used to live. Uh, I had two of my roommates uh, where they had just, they were from a uh, very government college, not very known. They had something around 7.3, 7.4 mechanical background people. Okay. But they're doing exceptionally well. Exceptionally well how they have done it. Although they have passed from their college with a limited knowledge, whatever their school taught, whatever their college taught. But they had that hunger to improve that knowledge. So they joined some other coaching coaching classes. There they did exceptionally well. They I I have 
learned about them from the stories that uh, that they have not touched their phones for around six seven months just to get away from the distraction what their peers are doing sometimes we just feel so much disappointed by the achievements of our peers that is the biggest de uh, demotivation for us correct i think you most of them you will agree with this like if you are opening our instagram feed na, now so someone is saying someone is doing an internet here someone is doing place that here so in our time it was just fb currently it is linkedin fb instagram everywhere it is there okay so i am also aware of this thing so cut down from that cut down from that cell phone delete all those apps study 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 so and and in our times this online learning platforms are also not available like an academy and all those <clears throat> nptel has just come to the forum sorry <clears throat> but currently you have everything at your dis even i can say that even if the uh, teachers are not teaching you properly some fundamental concept that even they are not sure of you can obviously go to youtube google that get a three four videos just learn it uh, conceptualize it and you will be you will, you need to have just enough cpi for an interview just to speak into an interview okay what you do in an interview is what is there in within you in, inherently within you what you have learned that cpi is just a, a kind of an a get pass get pass to seek for the interview let me tell tell you i have attended multiple interviews let me tell you one thing while i was in bombay i was rejected for eight consecutive companies in a span of two days in a span of two days okay so i am aware of that thing so even if i am having a cpi of 9.45 at that point of time it did not help me it just helped me to come to the uh, interviewers what i am seeing in front of the interviewee is a different ball game and also you need a little bit of luck also so what i was saying was just keep learning 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 i mean there is no end and also keep acquainted like whenever you are appearing for the interview or any scope just be don't dream just aim for it like in kota factory everyone we are we are aware of what jitu bhai has said like don't dream just aim it choose the word aim okay so uh, so each, so that's the thing i'll tell you people okay uh now we yeah. have a question from the audience chandrima you please go ahead okay uh, so uh, sir i want to assess that uh, mm, hello am i audible yes please yes you are audible chandrima oh uh, sir uh, as we know that uh, brain drain is a very big issue for india in hand right now and uh, and uh, people these days uh, like i know some of my uh, peers and also my seniors they want to go abroad do their ams and settle there and we also know that there are so many indian scientists too at nasa so i just want to ask that what uh, makes people work in the field in the same field but in different com- country for different country and uh, what our government or isro is doing to like prevent it uh, from their part okay okay that's a very very interesting question so uh, i'll just correct it that brain drain is the phenomena that is occurring not from now it has been occurring from yes, from yes, like sir. last 20 25 5 years okay yes, so yes. in our time also so but you have to understand why people are going to Uh, different countries okay there was a point of time uh, in my life even i thought of leaving the uh, leaving india and settle abroad by giving gr because <clears throat> because my placements were not that good in iit bombay so i thought of actually okay let me give the gr i'll go to the foreign country i'll be in germany i'll be settling out there i'll do a phd there but it so clicked for me and i stayed out here so basically one thing you have to understand is we will not get a high package job because the population is so much in in india if we are thinking of getting a and okay uh, i don't know what is the current package the btech people are getting right now in our time it used to be for core core companies it used to be 4.5 to 6 lakh okay if that one if people are if, if people are getting it is well enough okay 
So I might it, it might have increased to say 7.5 to 9 currently. Okay, I'm talking about seven years back. So if people, so if we are aiming for that at the very first instance, so that becomes an obstacle for us. Like my friends got me a package, my friends got me a package of three, three ki package. मैं क्या करूं मैं दोस्तों के साथ मैं मुंह दिखाने के लायक नहीं रहा फिर मेरे को मेरे को क्या करना मैं गेट गेट दूंगा मतलब जीआर जीआर ही दूंगा फिर मैं बाहर चला जाऊंगा दैट इज द टेंडेंसी दैट इट इज एग्जिस्टिंग एंड व्हाट हैपेंस आउटसाइड इज ना दैट द स्कोप इज सो मच द लिबर्टी टू वर्क इज सो मच इन आउटसाइड कंट्रीज द पीपल हैव दैट नैक ऑफ सेटलिंग आउट देयर बट एट सम पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम आई हैव आल्सो फेल्ट एंड आई हैव ऑफन हर्ड फ्रॉम द पीपल हु हैव सेटल्ड आउट देयर It's like they have a huge, but one thing you must be sure that once you are settling out there, na, you cannot come back to India here. You will not, you will never be able to work out here again. So very few returnees come from there. So they, I have, I have seen my relatives also who have gone out there, uh, coming back to India. They cannot settle like they cannot uh, tol- tolerate even one month of summer. Forget about staying in India and tol- and uh, working out here. So this is one thing like, it is just a personal thing like. No one has like when someone is not getting something, na, then they have to move out because of that. But if someone can persist, and I will say that it is, it's not that opportunities are not there in India. It is there. It is jammed there. But you will not find a diamond in your first instance, right? You have to go deep. You have to put your, you have to make your hands black. You have to go deep into it. Then only you will get a diamond out of from the from the from the ground from the underground so is this a situation entirely in india unless you are from a from a software industry uh, getting place in amazon or an intel or a kl tanker or something like that the uh, the situation is very much similar because if people are aiming for something like a um, very high package white collar job that is that is difficult sometimes from nit at a very first instance even from iit also let me tell you The number of core packages that we get in IIT is far far better than what we get in IIT Mumbai. Let me tell you this point. IIT NIT is also far far better in placing people out there. At least, लोगों को जब कॉलेज से निकलो गए ना आपको हाथ में कुछ तो होगा. वहाँ पे तो कुछ भी नहीं होता. बहुत बहुत से लोग 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 होते हैं. In that way, people go for PhD from from there and settle out abroad most of the times. <clears throat> that is my personal experience. Okay, sir. Thank you for that. And uh... any questions for us? Well, um, tell something about NAFI system. Its contribution to Indian interest and what it's working for. I'm sorry, Lisa. Can you just repeat it? Uh, the voice actually got cut in between. Yeah. Uh, oh. Nabi's system. Tell me something about and uh, its contribution to in Indian interest. Who it's working for? Uh, Nabi's system, sir. Tell us something about the Nabi's system. Oh, Nabi. Okay. Navic system, Navic. Okay, uh, if I am not wrong, you are trying to say you are trying to reach out to the point that Navic, the system that is uh, that is analogous to GPS, right? If if I am not wrong. Yeah, it's that. Okay, 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 okay. So um, it is currently it is existing. Um, uh, there is a plan to launch in many of the phones. I think. Uh, Uh, Xiaomi has, I think, a couple of months ago, I have read that uh, Xiaomi is going to be in tie up with that for using for the first time the Navi constellation. So I think our satellites are all in order. And, uh, so why it is not existing? It is actually uh, I am not aware uh, still because I have been hearing regard regarding this Navi thing for a very very long time that it should be in in our uh, we will we 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 should be using our own uh, tracking system. to navi but uh, maybe there are some other things to improve before we can uh, put it out in the market for overall usage of of the population mm-hmm. okay. uh, if possible can you share any story of uh, any mission that the part of 
any stories of 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 NIT or IIT? Any mission? No, no, any mission in IIT. No, 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 no. Any mission? Ah, no, any mission. As such, there is no scope. I'm not asking about animation. I'm asking about asking your story. If you have been been involved in animation. Oh, okay. Yeah, currently, uh, currently I am part of this uh, human space flight uh, mission. Currently, where uh, is that? What do you want to hear, right? In which mission I am a part part of, right? Currently, if I, if I could share some story regarding that, correct? Okay, okay, okay. Um, okay, this is something very interesting. Let me tell you. So, so you all are aware of that. I think most of the people you might have um, been been awake late night hours uh, during the landing of of Chandrayaan uh, Chandrayaan two, which were which, which was happening probably in the September twenty nineteen. Correct. You know what was the background? What it went. Yeah. So initial, so initial launch of that launch vehicle. So satellites are being carried by the launch vehicles. Okay. Now if the launch vehicle itself is a failure, then satellite is doomed. Forget about reaching to moon. Okay. Now tell now let me tell let, let me tell you on fifteenth of of uh, July twenty nineteen, the launch was there in the afternoon. The launch was called off. How many minutes ago? I think one, one and a half hours before the countdown had started. It was called off because due to some leakages were there. There was some some uh, some technical ano anomaly was there. For that, from our side, from our because it was a liquid engine in which some technical anomaly was there. So from our center, like huge rush of team had gone there and had worked for around continuously for around 168 hours. I'll tell you, 24 to 7. For around seven days, they had they had worked out. So to make the launch feasible on the next Monday, it was Monday on 15th of July 2019. It was 22nd of July 2019. You can just check on the dates. I'm I think I'm correct. It, the launch was taken off successfully, and that was the for the first time the Mark three mission was declared. The GSLV Mark three the launch vehicle was declared as operational. So that was so I'm I'm associated with that cryogenic engine. Which is uh, which is at the top most of the, the the cryogenic engine actually propels it and takes it to the uh, takes to the, the the satellite to uh, beyond the the atmosphere of the Earth. Okay, so so that was the thing that I am that I'm really like how dedicated the people can be and how much people can take a lot of efforts in this. So that's a simple short story that that behind that's the behind trivia. What has happened behind behind that that launch or the landing of that lunar landing of Chandrayaan two? But it is but it was historical, you know. It was historical, like really, it was like wow, what incredible has something happened in India? So yeah, uh, any story you want to share from the memory book of NIT or IIT? Ah yes, yes. There are there are many stories, innumerable stories for me, innumerable stories, stories for me. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, um, uh, I'll tell you, I'll I'll tell tell you the failure stories. Okay, that will be the best thing. I had very limited success. Most of them were fail failures only for me. So, so it was 2013, 2013, 2013. Um, it was a the placement season was going on, and uh, not placement season, rather internship session was was going on. Tata still had come for internship for to the metrology department. <clears throat> unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, what I will say is like I had a huge crush on Tata Steel to work there. Being a metallurgist and being a bong and just coming from Dur Durgapur, I didn't want to work ever in sale. Because it was too close to my house, I have seen people uh, working out there. But Tata Steel and Tata had a, had a great, uh, great sense of thing for me in my heart, and, and and it still does. And if today, if anyone gives me an option to choose between ISRO and Tata Steel, I will still stick to IS, ISRO. But still, like that feeling is there. If 
after like say 50 like 2000 like after 20 years i'll definitely like to work there so coming back to that that point so it happened like um uh yeah so internship was there so the people came for internship um so and this that and that point of time this uh, uh mangalan was uh, was about to uh, that mangalan landing was there the the orbiting was there mangalayan thing if you could remember november 2013 5th of november 2013 that was the or 5th of december 2013 something like that that was something going going on at that point of time okay so unfortunately the i my dreams got broken someone else was taken and tata steel generally takes people from that 7.5 cpi to 8.5 they have no business to do with people who are above 9.5 9 9 9 and above they had no business because they know that these people will give an internship next year they will come for a recruitment they will stay for one year then the person will leave and they will go that they they have this thing now coming to now okay fine um uh, i was okay my internship hua nahi kya kare abhi uske baad aaya i think i said oh, sorry our nit still has this thing of the collaboration with sun right with with sun so uh, in 2012 one of our senior had gone to sun from metallurgy department so after that no one had gone theek hai so and i was aware that uh, um in sun it's very strange thing for the shortlisting of candidates normally what they do is they will check the final cpi okay what they do there is they take the average of the cpi in every semester okay okay so in that is or if so because my first cpi my first semester pointer was 8.36 then it became 9 and 9, so it progressed like that so uh, i did not so when we are doing the average na so although my cpi was around say 9.33 something like that 9.33 9.924 something like but my average of the cpi was coming around 8.98 something like that something like like that so uh so there were 40 students who were selected for the interview uh in our uh, i think that white house is there so there the inter- interview was going i don't know what it's called right now the, at that point of time it is called white house white house it's still called the white house white. still called the white house yeah okay fine okay fine so so my so in that 40 number of list 40 people were shortlisted okay so my number came at 37 so basically uh, so i felt uh, If, so total six people were getting selected. So I'm okay. I don't stand any chance. Anyway, what role there is for the metallurgy department? But uh, interestingly, uh, a day before, someone told me that uh, I checked into something on CERN that they are trying to develop the superconducting magnet. They are trying to increase its power. Okay, that just crossed my mind. And then I checked out some superconducting. What are the new materials that are available? How much it will increase the gain? So that same thing that people asked me in the interview, and I spoke to them. I think uh, from physics department one sir used to be there, from electrical department one sir used to be there. They were mightily impressed that because they generally per year from electrical one person will go, from mechanical two person, from electronics one person two two persons will go, and one extra how will come from somewhere or the or or other. Okay. So metallurgy was no scope. Already 2012, some person had gone. 2014, no chance. But somehow, luck, destiny had played a role. I found that uh, that that superconducting thing. I told, and uh, the interviewing board uh, person. I think uh, I don't remember his name. I forgot. The electrical professor was was there. Enkeroy, Enkeroy was there. Enkeroy. So he asked me, "You have a passport?" Do you can you cook? Yes, sir. I can cook everything, sir. From mutton to cooking, everything I can cook. So he was mightily impressed, and uh, and the uh, interview went really well, and that's how that's an interesting story I can always tell. Like like sometimes, uh, and yeah. So sometimes when that's a lesson we will also keep this in mind. <laughs> so sometimes. when when life takes you a step backward na so don't feel that what has happened something the best things are about to come in life 
Okay, so had I been selected for Tata Steel, I could have never ventured into Europe for two months. That's what I feel. And similarly, similarly in IIT Bombay also. So, so because in IIT Bombay actually what happened was people from different backgrounds, people from different and it is like sixteen hundred people are coming to IIT Bombay and all a top cream of sixteen hundred M Tech people are coming. Plus add around the uh, around five fifty B Tech people. And in and in IITs, na, there is a strange strange thing. B Tech and M Tech placement happened together. For some companies, uh, B Tech and M Tech people both sit at the same same time. They are called for the same time. Okay. So you have to compete with the B Techs. So there was a time. So and in NIT, it happens like the placements happen all the year round, starting from July, then till May, sometimes till June also. I remember. I don't know what it happens right now. It used to be the same at that point of time. But in IIT, it is only a ten-day window. Ten-day window, I'll say, from December one to December ten, maximum extended to December sixteen. Beyond that, again, second phase of will be starting. So I got placed on December eleven. Uh, prior to that, uh, prior to that, I had visited eight to ten companies in a span of ten days, and eight companies in a span of two days. So after that, somehow I managed to see through. In a in a private company, where uh, where the days were not good, actually, you know, frankly speaking, when I when I look back on those days, it those days really made made me tough. You know what? Um, when those companies just to avoid some work and to study, I used to sit below the table just so that no one can see see me, and I used to read the books. Yeah, this 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 was the gate book that that I used to read at that point of time. Okay, that point of time Beh below the table because I wanted to quit that job. So so I just lasted for fifty days, and during that time, uh, I somehow I tried Hindustan Copper. In Hindustan Copper, gave me some kind of a stability, but not that enough that satisfaction for that that eyes eyes are okay because I joined M Tech. From IIT Bombay, thinking like every one of you, like that I want to have the best placement in the country that everyone has. Whoever joins in in IIT Bombay, we all have that dream. But sometimes all dreams are not will not get fulfilled. That thing has to be accepted by us, and that I learned in a very hard way. But somehow uh, the practice, the perseverance, it pays off in some time. So yeah. So after one and a half years of struggle, finally I got ISR and yes. Hopefully, I can enroll into PhD very soon without sacrificing the job, but as a sponsored candidate. Then that's my next goal. Yeah, these are two interesting stories I have in fact. And now I have a question. Now this is my personal question. I personally do have backlog in two subjects in my fourth semester, and I just cleared it like one day before I had the exam. Uh, I don't know. I just I give my best. Now, all bachelor candidates are allowed. So, like, is there any chance? Because I really had a great remembrance on ISRO when I was like uh, in my fifth chapter. I studied the book Wings of Fire, and then only uh, that one thing was revolving in my head that is. So, is there any chance? Okay. Um, from which uh, stream are you, Lisa? Mechanical engineering. Metal No, no, mechanical engineering. Okay. Okay, mechanical engineering. Then, so you have a lot of science. Why in this room? You have a lot of science uh, scope in everywhere. See, I'll tell, tell you. Uh, I want ISRO. I'm very okay, you want ISRO. Okay, 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 okay. Fine. fine. Okay, fine. Yeah. Um. Let me put it. Uh, these things like this. ISRO. When it takes out the recruitment, na. Um. So there'll be two types of recruitment. They'll they'll be there. One there there are three 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 types in fact. Okay. So one is for B Techs. All around overall India, okay. That they ask for around uh, CPF around say something around seven seven point five 
maybe less also sometimes 6.5 also some 6.5 or above okay they are they never ask any backlog or something these backlog things comes only in the placement thing only let me tell tell, tell you this thing final cpi should be more than 7. Point, if you are having a final cpi more than 7, 7.5 and if you are uh, and if you can perform well in the interview you don't have to worry about anything forget about backlog you will just drop into ifr or job one day trust me these backlog things come into picture uh, uh, because of this place, placement things things only in our own placement campus that's okay. it never ever it will come back again oh continue about this thing and feeling a little bit light okay the next thing is that we have like i am in now third year we have one year in our uh, in my heart so how is to prepare uh, for a uh, gate for i could get a like you know decent rank and uh, like can uh, have they from out to this okay mm -hmm. Uh, see, for for mechanical, so I can always say that there are so many right, right now online. Um, this uh, this online classes are there. These groups are there who are teaching uh, to an excellent level. In our days, it never used to be. And I don't know whether Mitrati has has it or not. But for mechanical, electrical, CS, there are there like uh, Khan Academy or like uh, Un Un Academy. I think Baiju is there. I think in Hyderabad, some some things are there also. Um, okay, so 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 coming to the gate point of view, um, let me put it in this way: like, um, if you want, like, uh, if you want to have a great rank, so you need to. See, from from the metallurgy point of view, I can give you an idea. But from a mechanical point of view, I do not know what kind of a pattern they give you in the exams. But yes, sir. Give, getting acquainted with those question, yeah, getting acquainted with those question papers was very much helpful for me. So um, I started uh, start solving those question papers from the beginning of fourth year when I was have, having it. I think that might help you because at least uh, the questions do repeat. Maybe the figures won't, but the but as but you will get a feel that okay this is a part of the chapter from which regularly or very alternate years the questions will come so you need to feel that point so you better get acquainted with one of those i don't know how the professors are teaching currently and if you are not okay with that you can always enroll into some online coaching classes that might help you and end up in a great rank for okay What's the scope of robotics in ISR? Currently, there is. Uh, current, I am not aware of that. Currently, I am not aware of that uh, scope. Um, it's still in the preliminary stage. We are not making any robots so far, but uh, but but there are some very very small divisions who are working on a very preliminary level. That's what I am aware. I cannot. Uh, I'm not much. Into this because uh, robotics is a completely different field from a, from a mechanical perspective, and uh, I'm into launch vehicle side, so there, um, uh, there, I'm not much aware into this. Sorry, I cannot, uh, I cannot say much into this. Okay, okay. Uh, you know, I ask another question, but some may laugh at it. But see, NASA is something which is, you know, beyond uh, like a human calculation. The amount is spent on the research project and watch vehicles or certain things. And, you know, for the last 10 years, the space ISRO has just, you know, the breakthroughs in its research programs, launch vehicles, and everything. So, is there any chance in the future where ISRO can beat NASA anyhow? Okay. Because because okay. there is a rumor I have heard in the internet during these days that no one can beat NASA. No one can beat NASA. But you know, I'm sick. 
Is there any chance that Istro can be NAS, uh, NASA like? Because I have heard in the news like NASA has approached Istro for many collaboration projects, but Istro is not being paid either due to some political issues or administrative issues like that. Hmm. Okay. To answer that, let me tell you. Uh, let me give you a small example. Is it okay to compare the abilities of an eagle with an abilities of a whale, blue whale? Is it okay? They they are both predators in their own way. Okay, they are not predators in their own own way. Yeah. What we should understand. From an organizational point of view, space organizational point of view, is that that whatever NASA is doing, let us take inspiration from them and build up on a separate research objective. It's no point emulating what they have already done. To some extent, let us have the capacity or the facilities to go on a further hunt for something. But let us know one thing. ISRO, the vision of Dr. Sarabhai, when it was established, when ISRO was established, was not to compete with any space agencies or nothing, but to provide remote sensing facility and telecommunication facility to the entire population of India. Okay, NASA's goal might be different. ISRO's goal is different. Okay, let me say in this manner. Slowly, we have to understand this that okay, both are doing uh, both are doing. so. Will you okay? Everyone says sees cricket here, right? Is the the batsman's role is different, bowler's role is different. Okay, so but ultimately, we have to serve the need of the humanity. We have to serve the need of the humanity. That's it. Vikram Sarabhai, at a very young age, he understood that. Although India has gained independence, independence from the Britishers, but to gain an independence, overall independence from a technological or reliance point of view, also we need to develop something. We need to protect our borders. We need to protect our crops. We need to protect our people. We need to get the satellite wireless connections. So that was a vision. So. To and to answer your point, this the vision of ISRO and NASA is different, and we will never try to uh, our goal. We will we will never try to um, catch up with NASA. Or, so NASA's engines, you know, uh, today what we are trying to figure out one engine. NASA had developed that 1969. They had a lunar landing in 1969, correct? If I'm not wrong, at that point of time, yeah. they had a lunar landing then. The India Okay, let it grow. Let it grow. But our goals are different. Let, but, our, but, but our goals are different. If you see our launch vehicles also, our launch vehicles, their launch vehicle, there's a huge difference in their payload capacity. Our launch vehicles right now can cater to four ton, four ton payload satellite they can carry. Their launch vehicles can carry more than that. One order of magnitude higher can carry. Okay. With the establishment of Elon Musk's uh, Falcon Heavy, they can carry, uh, like, we cannot imagine what they can carry. Elon Musk has put an entire roadster, Tesla roadster, in the in the orbit. Uh, it is rotating, that car is rotating in the space. That is his technology demonstration. So, everyone's view is different related to space, what they want to do, but Primarily, our role was currently our role might have also changed. Like we want to protect our borders, and uh, this thing is also there, like like the the weather forecast and everything. That is how it has been built. Some okay. trips to uh, if you you people also might be aware, like uh, ISO also does an expedition to Antarctica to to yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah. ISO does also a trip to Antarctica. So that yeah. uh, that is also a very small part that. That is is also doing, though it does not come into highlight. It is also doing that that thing. They they have set up a base camp in Antarctica also. They are trying to understand uh, the soil beneath. 
beneath the ice what is what is there because that will help us to understand how uh, because those ices have never melted from the pre like from the stone stone age times that will help us to understand how it used to be how the geological uh, stability of earth or in any information and from a very longer period from million of years how how it was okay so we have to understand that i i am not sure whether i have answered you, your question or not but to be frank their goals are different and we will never try to catch up with nasa we can take an inspiration but never try to catch up with nasa okay okay uh, my another question is that you like have like seen how k7 has been as a ceo of isro uh, sorry sorry how mr k7 has been like a boss how how is he oh, how is my life being like a boss no, no, no it's not your life i'm talking about cases um i'm not able to hear it properly uh please okay, repeat it once k7 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 oh okay okay dr k shivan okay dr k shivan was our eminent um uh, chairman chairman i sir uh, i think he he just uh, retired uh, in january 2022 he had been on that post for for around 4 uh, years from 2018 and uh, no i did not have any personal in, interaction with him because he, uh, because when he was in the director post of my center i was in nid at that point of time <laughs> so i did not have that kind of interaction with him but i have heard a great uh, stories regarding him that that how that how much he has achieved from from such coming from such a humble background and uh, and that's an inspiration and uh, footprints that are the footprints on the sands of time that doesn't matter what craft what creed to what occupation what kind of a uh, uh, family we are brought up but we have a will to succeed and if we have little bit of luck also at crucial moments of time why not we can go to chairman i sir also and uh, this is incredible thank you so much mr sandeepan das sir because you know till date it has been the most fascinating as most engaging sessions it could ever be now i would ask the audience any questions from the audience forum sir sir can anyone ask question yes sir i have a question yeah yeah, yeah please yeah, go yeah, please on a student from chemical engineering branch can he apply for um, the big level exam of isro chemistry okay system. answering to this okay okay yeah so that is a very i cannot hear you sir you are muted please unmute yourself you are muted you are muted yes, okay yeah not so yeah i just, i would like to share this information to everyone please have a repeated look at the website of is isro chemical engineers are definitely recruited by isro there are um, there is a, a plant like prop plants are there like where we make the solid motor rockets and everything there is a chemical engineers are needed out there okay vikram sarabhai space center chemical engineers are needed out there so uh, prob rockets there that the, the facility is there in sri sri hari kota in uh, in andhra pradesh okay so uh, vacancies are coming vacancies keep coming please have a look because the vacancies will not be enormous like not 5 6 uh, not like 5 5 6 number it will only be two numbers maximum but you have to look for it and coming from an nit background you always have an edge over because generally generally the iitians do not apply for these jobs so nit is are the next people who apply so please look please keep looking and i would like to uh, tell one more point to each and every one of you to these branches let me tell let, let me tell tell you that isro recruits on three fronts okay first front they do a campus placements uh, please 
request your uh, TPRs to please contact the headquarters of ISRO because I have seen that they are even recruiting from some private colleges of Punjab. Okay, private colleges of Punjab. So if they can recruit from there, why don't they recruit from NITs also? They are recruiting from NIT Warangal also. I have I have people from my batch uh, who have been recruited from NIT Warangal. And what is the problem in recruiting from NIT Durgapur? I would request each and every one of you to please put this word to the uh, to the training placement department to just have a look what is the way out to reach ISRO and to convince them to come for placement. Okay, this is one point. Second point, ISRO recruits for um, MTech based recruitments also. So people who who are your seniors who who you want to put a word. They recruit uh, MTech based recruitments also. So they are from their chemical engineers, mechanical engineers, metallurgy engineers, um, okay, um, electrical engine, not electrical, electronics rather. They have these scopes. Finally, the major chunk where people get uh, recruited in ISRO is ISRO Centralized Recruitment Board, ICRB. Please, whoever are listening right now, please go and check in Google the ICRB recruitment for the last happening, last year. Uh, advertising what has happened. It had 139 mechanical posts. If my figure is a little bit plus minus 10, 128, I think, uh, electronic posts and 109, something around 95, 96, uh, some computer science posts, something was there. Sorry, electronic posts, something like electronic mechanical computer science, something was there like, like that. Okay, please go and look. So, BTEC bio, that is for a BTEC eligibility. So, uh, the last recruitment uh, advertisement came in 2019 and the, and currently the recruitments are on hold but definitely it might come in the end of 2022 so please be aware of that thing if it does not come in 2022 so the final year students who will be graduating in 2023 it would be a great opportunity for you to to participate in that uh, recruitment board so please uh, 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 please Gather yourself with all your art artilleries of knowledge so that uh, you can blast the interview because uh, the first one will be the return test, inter return test. And uh, trust me, return test does not count. I have seen people who have scored who are at the bottom of the return test interview, but they have gone on to score AIR 1, AIR 2, AIR 3 in the after the interviews. Okay, these are my humble requests to each and every one of you. Please have a look at ICR. Go and check in Google. You will get an idea. ICRB. Recruitments. Sir, do they recruit from the metallurgical, um, the core metallurgical at the BTEC level? Sir? The actual, I am from mm, metallurgy. Yes, 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 yes. They do recruit. They do recruit. So, for, for recruitment from metallurgy division, please go and check regularly um, at BSSP website, BSSP, Vikram Sarabhai Space Center web, website. Okay. Okay. It's VSSC, right? Hello? <clears throat> so? Yeah. It's VSSC, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes, it's at Vikram Sarabhai Space Center, VSSC. Any other questions from the audience? Uh, you are not audible. Uh, I mean, you are audible, but the voice is a little bit. Yeah, the voice is cracking because it's raining over here. So. Okay. That's great. Yeah. But you know, this station is incredible. You know, I'm such a huge man of Israel. Anywhere, any just conclave comes up, I just mean, you know, listening re repetitively. So, yeah, any other questions from the audience section? I guess no. All of us previously. Audience? Okay, okay. So now there's a I would ask anyone over here to please present the certificate. Thank you so much, sir. You know, uh, in this we are very much blessed that you are our alumni and you are in ISRO. So we have thoroughly enjoyed the session. And this is this application, a little gift from Kaiser to you. Uh, thank you for being our alumni and. Uh, 
It's amazing. It's amazing the session. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me on board and uh, and definitely you people can always um, ping me on LinkedIn um, and have any queries related to uh, any kind of department or any recruitment anything you can I can definitely answer you to the best of my abilities and it was also a nice session and it's always feel good that when your alma mater people calls you for the sessions and I would definitely would love to have a uh, one on one a formal talk by going to the college not in this online mode i think that would rather uh, yes, have a more impact actually sir yeah. in saisal we have this uh, alumni uh, mentorship uh, students alumni mentorship program stam where okay. uh, alumni is uh, uh, like interested uh, alumni is uh, guide or interested one or two students uh, uh, in a path they want to pursue uh, one on one to one, they do interactions and guide them. Just that. Yes, I will be there. I mean, I have plans of coming um, in the upcoming months to Durgapur. So um, nobody. Uh, I am. I am. I am. I am always okay in having one to one session. It will be a great privilege from my side to have to interact with our future brains of our NIT Durgapur. I always have a great love for this organization. So, sir, uh, can we like, uh, sir? Yeah, can we go Can can we like uh, take your name for the stamp uh, a mentor? Uh, like. Yes, 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 definitely, definitely. Yes. Thank you, thank you. That's that's a very big thing for us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, we are highly obliged, sir. And thank you so much. Is the is the certificate shown? I am presenting it. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 been shown. Yeah, I can see the certificate. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. We are indeed delighted and gratified from the inner core of our heart. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, sure. Thank you, sir. I love you, sir. Bye bye. Good night, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Nice participation, team.